Here we're going to look at a problem from a Hungarian math contest from 1958. And I found this problem as well as the method of solution in this nice problem book that I've got that I'll post some information on the screen right now. Okay, so we want to suppose that A, B, C, D, E, F is a convex hexagon where the opposite edges are parallel. And then next we want to show that the area of triangle A, C, E is equal to the area of triangle B, D, F. And we're going to use this nice notion of signed area in order to prove this. And I've summarized the thing that we're going to use by this lemma. So let's define S of triangle ABC, where this is the signed area, to be equal to the area of triangle ABC. If ABC are in counterclockwise order, and it's minus the area of triangle ABC if ABC are in clockwise order. And then what we will prove is that for any other point in the plane, S of triangle ABC is equal to S of triangle PAB plus S of triangle PBC plus S of triangle PCA. So let's maybe see how to do this. And this proof really breaks down into two cases. And the first case is if P is inside the triangle, and the second case is when P is outside the triangle. So let's maybe look at the first case first. So let's get our triangle ABC here, and let's put everything in counterclockwise order. So we know that S of triangle ABC is really just the area. Okay, so next we'll go here and put our point P and notice that creates all of these sub triangles, which I'll put with this orange line segments. Okay, nice. And now notice that we have S of triangle ABC will be the area of this entire triangle, but we can see that this entire triangle is partitioned into these three sub triangles. Notice the area of this bottom subtriangle is the same thing as S, P, A, B because they are in counterclockwise order. So here we'll put this is equal to S triangle P, A, B plus the area of this triangle right here, which is S of P, B, C again because it's in counterclockwise order. So here we have S triangle P, B, C, and then finally this triangle right here, which will be P, C, A. So we have S of triangle P, C, A. So that's all there is to this case really. Okay, so now let's look at the next case, which is if P is a point outside of the triangle. So again, we'll get our picture going. So let's say this is our triangle here, A, B, C, and then maybe we'll put our point P out here. Although the picture becomes a little bit different depending on exactly where you put this outside the triangle. I'll let you guys play around with different places to put this though. Okay, good. Now let's create all of the necessary triangles. So we'll have this triangle right here, which is P, B, C, and then we'll have this triangle right here, which is P, C, A. Then let's go ahead and name this intersection point as well. We'll name this intersection point O. Now we'll calculate the left hand and the right hand side of this identity and show that they are the same. So let's look S of triangle A, B, C. So notice that that is going to be just the area of triangle A, B, O plus the area of triangle AOC because we've got this sub triangle and this sub triangle right here. And that's because we've got this happening in counterclockwise order like we need to. Now let's calculate each of these three parts. So let's do S of triangle PAB like that. Okay, so let's see PAB. So notice that P, A, B are in counterclockwise orientation. So that means we can just add up the area of these triangles. So here we have area of triangle A, B, O plus area of triangle P, O, B. Now let's look at the next part, which is this S of triangle P, B, C. So S triangle P, 
B, C. So notice P, B, C are oriented in clockwise orientation, which means we'll pick up a minus sign from the areas. So this is gonna be minus the area of triangle P, O, C, minus area of triangle P, O, B. Now we've got one more, and that's triangle P, C, A. So we'll do S of triangle P, C, A. The vertices P, C, A are oriented in counterclockwise orientation, so we get just positive areas here. So this is gonna be the area of triangle P, C, O, plus the area of triangle A, O, C, like that. Now notice that everything below this blue line gets added and should equal everything above that blue line. So let's make sure that that happens. So if we add up everything below the blue line, notice that this guy will cancel with this guy, this guy will cancel with this guy, and we're left with exactly what we need in order to achieve what's above the blue line. Okay, so I'm gonna put this result over here and then we'll jump to the solution of our problem. Okay, now we're ready to jump into the solution of our problem. So I've drawn a hexagon where the opposite edges are parallel. And I wanna notice that first of all, there are some areas of triangles inside of this hexagon which are kind of immediately equal. So let's look first at triangle A, B, E. So maybe I'll draw that one out like this versus triangle A, B, D. So let's maybe put that here in red. Now notice that they share a base and the base that they share is line segment A, B. And then furthermore, since A, B and D, E are parallel, the distance from A, B to D, E is well-defined, and that's the height of each triangle. So each of these triangles shares a base and they share a height, so that makes their area the same. But if their area is the same, then their signed area is the same as long as we orient the vertices in the correct way. So let's maybe go ahead and write down what we get out of this. We'll get S of triangle A, B, E, is equal to S of triangle ABD. And let's look at the orientation here. So ABE is counterclockwise orientation and ABD is also counterclockwise orientation. And so really we're just getting the area for this signed area. Now we can do this another time. We can actually do this two more times. But next maybe we'd want to do triangle E, F, and C. So that would be like this one right here with triangle E, F, and B. So that would be like this one right here. And notice that those two guys share the same base. It's line segment E, F. And since this edge and this edge are parallel, they have the same height. So that means their area is the same. But then their signed area is the same as long as we're careful about orienting our vertices. So let's maybe write that down as well. So we have, have S of triangle EFC equals S of triangle EFB. And now our picture is getting kind of messy, but we have one more pair of triangles that are equal, and those are gonna be triangle CDA, and we'll have S of that, so that would be the signed area of that, and then triangle CDF. So the signed area of that. Where those are oriented so that we've got the signed area is just the area. Okay, nice. Now next what we wanna do is take any other point in the plane. So let's maybe write this down. So take P to be any other point. And then next we'll expand the left-hand side and the right-hand side of each of these equalities of signed areas using the identity which we proved in the previous lemma. Okay, so let's maybe get all of those expansions on the board real quick. Okay, so like I said, we took each of these three equations, which we argued geometrically, and expanded them using our identity from the lemma. And so that gave us three 
equivalent equations where just the left hand side and the right hand side have been expanded. Now we can start simplifying this. So first off, what we want to think about doing is maybe adding these three equations. So here we've got this plus this, and then this plus this. So really we've got a single equation, which is just the sum of all of the left-hand sides equals the sum of all of the right-hand sides. And now we're ready to get simplifying. So notice that if we think about all of this over here as one side of the equation, then all of this over here as the other side of the equation, we see that we've got an S of triangle PAB on both sides, so that can cancel. So we can cancel this term with this term. Then similarly, we can cancel this term with this term, this S of triangle PEF, and this S of triangle PCD. And now we can look for more things inside of here that will also cancel, and there are more. So notice that here we have S of triangle so notice here we have S of triangle PFC. That'll cancel with this S of triangle PFC. And we have this S of triangle PBE will cancel with this S of triangle PBE from subtracting from both sides. Finally, we have S of triangle PDA will cancel with S of triangle PDA, again from subtracting from both sides. And then we're left with these three terms on the left-hand side and these three terms on the right-hand side. But next, what we can notice is we can apply our identity in reverse to the sum of these three terms that are left on the left-hand side to end with S of triangle ACE. And we can apply the identity in reverse to everything that's left on the right-hand side to leave us with S of triangle B, D, F. But then, since in our original hexagon, these are oriented in counterclockwise orientation, these are just the area of each. So this is the area of triangle A, C, E. And this over here is the area of triangle B, D, F. Which is exactly what we wanted to show. And that's a good place to stop.